Hello, Ducks fans. Welcome to QuackCast, episode 5 on the season, back in the old setting for an episode. And today we're going to talk about the previous games that we played. And my goodness, they were amazing. The Ducks won all three of them. Three game winning streak. We've been undefeated for an entire week. LFG. Let's go. Woo! I totally agree with you. The Ducks have looked so much better than they did last year to start this season. 5 4 and 3 to start off our first 12 of the season. And some of our guys have been dominating. I like what I'm seeing on the power play. Bringing in Jeff Ward, best acquisition the Ducks have ever made in franchise history. Bob Murray stays forever. Okay. Are you sure about that? But the Ducks, I love what they're doing. Even when they've lost, some of those losses have been very, very competitive, though. Like that one we had against the Golden Knights, which stunk. But we still played really hard. The, I really love what the forward core is doing. Kevin Shattenkirk is actually doing good on defense. He's been known to be good in the past, though. So, just like you... Ducks fan, I am super happy that the Ducks are starting off well, and I hope they can continue it in their next games. played the New Jersey Devils earlier in the week. Let's go ahead and recap that game. So the Ducks post a shutout. Their first one of the year taking down the Devils 4 to nothing. Impressive. Now I wonder how the devil we got it. Let's take a look and see. To start off, the captain, Ryan Getzloff, teed up a howitzer of a shot on the power play. And once again, another power play goal. As I overly loyal Ducks fan said, the power play is improving a lot thanks to the uh, bringing in of Jeff Ward in the offseason. Here is Getzloff's power play goal. Fowler. Getzloff. Slap shoot that because he can't shoot it even though he's a pass first second player. I'd love to see him take that shot. He left it on the table. Fowler has it over to Getzlaff where we see. So you're probably asking yourself. What the devil did I just witness? Why did I see the same two clips? Well, because this game, you see, it was played on, <clears throat> sorry, it was played on Dia de los Muertos night. So for those who don't know Spanish, I'll, I'll translate, Dia de los Muertos means Day of the Dead. And, it, and that's a tradition that happens in, in the Spanish culture. And the first clip was the call of Ryan Getzloff's power play goal in Spanish, then I showed the second clip so you could then hear it in the English. So Ryan Getzloff with the bottom of the shot probably might have broke through Jonathan Bernier's glove, it was so hard. <laughs> One nothing ducks after that. On another power play, because the Devils took another penalty for you can't do that, or maybe something they shouldn't have done. Bruh. Troy Terry gets a power play goal on a great pass from the captain. And with that goal, Troy Terry, at the time of the Tuesday game, extended his point streak to nine consecutive Most games. Impressive. As of today, Saturday, the day I'm shooting this video, Troy Terry is our leading goal scorer at seven, and he has 12 points on the season. I lied, make that 13, but still, that's very impressive. Isaac Lundestrom got a goal, got, got a goal in this game as well. Who and there, and who else scored for us? It was oh Troy Terry again in the third period with goal number seven. 
Our fourth and final goal of the game came while short-handed. Yes, this time it was short-handed, unlike that one in the Canadiens game when Jake Evans nice. was. Isaac Lundestrom scored, short-handed, assisted by Derek Grant. You want to see how the devil he scored? Bruh. Oh, I thought I would show it to you in Spanish, uh, another uh, Spanish call of a goal just for a little different element, uh, just to make it interesting. So tell me what you thought of the uh, Spanish goal calls. We're not going to get those a lot. Uh, that's the last of the Ducks and Devils game, and we will go to the Friday game versus the Coyotes. And how about this? It took me 12 tries, but I finally have a correct prediction score in the books for 2021-2022 campaign. Ducks win 3-1 over the Arizona Coyotes, who are now, they're 0 10 and one Yikes! Oh, God. That's horrible. And I mean, the Coyotes were playing really good hockey early, despite the fact that they gave up a goal 34 seconds into Adam Henrique. They peppered 15 shots on our backup goalie, Anthony Stolarz, who we have slandered a lot this year. But I'm glad that Aikens gave Stolarz a chance to play tonight and at least have a chance to be better, and he was much better. He, ever since the uh, assist when he broke Temu's points record against the Canadians on Halloween, I think that has galvanized him to get closer to 1,000 much quickly, more quickly. He's got a bunch of points now in his last few games. Troy Terry gets another point, and with that assist, 10 straight games with a point for Troy Terry. Amazing. As we speak right now, that's tied with Connor McDavid of the Oilers. Now I'll say this, when you're tied with Connor McDavid for something, you're doing something right. That is correct. Sonny Milano, who looks rejuvenated as a duck after his post-concussion syndrome injuries last year, Ouch. gets the second goal of the game for us, and it's on the power play, assisted by Adam Henrique and Kevin Shattenkirk. The Ducks would make it three to nothing with Sam Carrick getting his second goal of the year on a great pass from Derek Grana two on one. But at the t very tail end of the game, after a lot of fighting, uh, the game got really ugly. There was a lot of fighting, and a couple players on the Coyotes got 10-minute misconducts. Uh, he and Nick Delorier fought at the end of the game, and I was listening to it on the radio. I kept wondering, um, the Coyotes are 0 and 10. Why are they trying to? F why are they throwing? F why are we doing fisticuffs? Like it doesn't. To me, it didn't make sense. So Shane Goss despair. I guess I have to say thank you for scoring on Stolars. I immediately regret this decision. You, but your goal with eight seconds to go in the game gave me the correct prediction score. Ah, uh, who needs a shout out when you can have a correct prediction score? I'm one for 12. So now we will go to talk about our next three games. We got one more here at home tomorrow, Sunday, 5 p.m. versus the St. Louis Blues. The Blues have historically been very good against the Ducks. The goal, their goalie, Jordan Bennington, who will get in your face and maybe swing his stick at you like he did towards Nazem Kadri last week. I mean, you, it's easy to piss him off. But he's 5-1-1 one, one this year. And he's all, and as I said, he's had very good numbers against the Ducks. He's a tough goalie to beat. But players to watch in that game? Troy Terry, as I mentioned, 10 games with a point in a row, 13 points overall in the season, 7 goals, 6 assists, in 11 games played, so over a point per game. The captain, Getzloff, has a goal and 10 assists for 11 points in 12 games. And for also for the Ducks, Kevin Shattenkirk leads all NHL defensemen right now in points at 12. Also is a plus 5 rating in his last 5, which is pretty good. 3 goals and 9 assists overall. For the Blues, David Perron, Ducks legend. More, he is a point per game player this year with 10 points in 9 games. Vladimir Tarasenko has been really hot in these last five games. Three goals, four assists, seven points, and a plus four rating. And I just realized this. When I say the Blues were good, 7-1-1. One, one. 
Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. So, we gotta watch for, as I said, for Tarasenko, Perron, and finally Jordan Kairou. Kairou, a younger player, a center, has 10 points in 9 games this year with a plus 6 rating, 2 goals, 8 assists. Young forward, good playmaker. Also the special teams of the Blues. We gotta keep an eye on this because the Blues have the second best power play and penalty kill coming into this matchup. So, I would say that you gotta stay out of the penalty box in this one. Correct. Our penalty kill is top 10 at 10th place and our power play is 6th. We're going to need a great goaltending performance out of Gibson because the, also because the Blues have the fourth best goals for scoring four, four, uh, four goals per game and only giving up 2.2 goals per game. And, but, and the Ducks have an okay goals against or goals for at 11th place, not nearly as good as the Blues at 3.17. A lot of interesting things to look for in that matchup. We'll, I'll, I'll predict it at the end of the video. Now we go to the next game and that will be Tuesday. And it's up to Canada again to take on the Vancouver Canucks. Those games in the, over the years have been really good, Ducks and Canucks. And the Canucks, they've struggled a bit there, 4-6-1. and one. But they have some good players on the team that have had great numbers against the Ducks. One of which is Bo Horvat. Bo Horvat has 7 points in 11 games, 4 goals, 3 assists but he's a big, tough forward to knock off of the puck, so keep your eye on him, number 53. JT Miller, three goals, nine assists, 12 points, 11 games. He's really good. He signed a big contract a couple off seasons ago with the Canucks as a free agent from the Tampa Bay Lightning. Defenseman Quinn Hughes is their most gifted offensive defenseman. Good puck handling abilities, can score you some goals. Has three assists and a plus five rating in his last five contests. And we will now go to the next game, which is that Thursday, and we get a brand new matchup. We will visit Climate Pledge Arena to take on the Seattle Kraken. The Kraken, not off to a super hot start. Same record as the Canucks at 4-6-1. Uh, and one. They are a team that are like the New York Islanders, made hard to play against. Not a team that is like has a super big name on their team, like that's well known but they are very well-rounded and they have some very good players that we should watch for. One of them who just scored the first ever hat trick in Kraken history, Jordan Eberle. Jordan Eberle was a long, a long time former Oiler, um, has five goals in his last five. Yeah, he's Impressive. pretty good. Keep your eye on him, number seven. For, um, former St. Louis Blue, Jaden Schwartz, who signed a huge contract, five-year deal. With them, number 17 has five assists and seven points in his last five, so he's been pretty hot. The other guy we should watch for, I think, would be Junis Donskoy. Donskoy, very good player. Second line caliber, maybe third line if you want to. He can score goals a lot, and he's got good playmaking abilities. So keep your eye on those three. And I expect Philip Grubauer to start, because he has had all the starts this year over their new backup goalie, Chris Dreger. So, my predictions? So, for the game against the St. Louis Blues, while I would love to see the Ducks, like, shock the world and be a 7-1-1 team, and I know they've been hot, but there's always that game where you're bound to look like absolute garbage. I think the, I think John Gibson's going to have a bad night, sadly, because I remember this happened when the Blues were in town for a game they scored three goals in the first two minutes. Would not be surprised if we had that here. Then again, watch me be wrong somehow. I think the Blues are going to take this game, and I think it will be a final score of 5-3, to three, with the Blues scoring a couple early, but the Ducks trying to keep it close, but ultimately losing. The game against the Canucks that Tuesday, I expect that the Ducks will win that game. We have historically been good against the Canucks. I think the Ducks have a chance to win that game, and I'll take that game... How about we go in overtime? That should be interesting. I think in overtime, the Ducks will take this game 3-2. to two. And then for the Kraken, now this is going to be a hard one to gauge. I think, I don't think this is going to go to overtime, but I think the Ducks are going to get a win by a score of 4-2 to two versus the Kraken. Because we've been good versus Grubauer. They just don't know. It's just a guess, obviously, but I think the Ducks can beat the Kraken 
and and be undefeated against them in their first ever matchup in the Ducks in their in their franchise history playing. All right, that is it for this episode. Tell me what you thought of it in the comments section below. Remember to click like, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you have not done so already, and stay tuned for a new, couple new episodes of Roast Off Barbecue. I've got one coming in a couple of days, and I'll have one around another one around Thanksgiving time. So ha with all that being said, have a good night, stay safe, let's go Ducks, and let's continue the winning streak.